So, for those of you with a very, very short memory, cast your mind back and try and remember what last November and especially December was. And especially try and really cast your mind back to what it was that the Brexiteers was saying about the fishing industry, about how it was the one of the most crucial industries to the United Kingdom, even though it made up less than 1% of our GDP, even though, as we have talked about many, many times before on this channel, the fishing industry is facing huge problems that need to be addressed. And essentially, them being in the European Union really wasn't one of them. You know, you have a domestic UK market that eats less fish than the UK uh, fishermen actually catch. You have the problems of mechanization of large industrial factory ships versus the very somewhat smaller trawler ships. And as we've said before, this is like trying to compare a farmer who uses a modern tractor to another farmer who still uses a horse and plow. One of them is going to be more productive than the other. And this, again, is true for these massive ships versus the smaller ones. That one of these smaller ones can do in about a month what it takes a day for one of these big ones to actually do. Now, the Brexiteers were adamant that no deal should be signed and that the fish was somehow a really important fact uh, to this deal, even though, like I say, the government, and they did seem to risk the financial service sector as well as the service sector as a whole, basically thrown to the wind so that they could get fish done. And again, from an economic standpoint, it makes no sense that you would prioritise fishing over the financial services sector and the service sector. And remember, we are a service economy. Our economy, 80% of it is made up of services. So today, today of all things, we go and turn to what look a ex-Brexit party MEP has to say about this whole situation and it's incredibly funny because as we've said before many of these problems were predicted well in advance it's just that when we brought up well how are you going to solve these problems the answer just came back as oh that's just project fear you don't have to worry about it well the problems are here and you have no solutions to them and this all goes back to the whole thing once again, where Brexit was just this ideological project that had no policy behind it. So before we jump into today's article, please do remember to hit that like and share button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link as well called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me a coffee. And thank you very much to all those people that do support me that way. So on with today's article. And this comes from the London Economic. The title is ex-Brexit party MEP says Johnson's deal has left her fishing business on its knees. <laughs> and this was always going to happen. It didn't matter, for example, if, if somehow miraculously the Brexit party swept to victory and Nigel became prime minister. The fishing industry would still be on its knees in a far worse state because Nigel would have probably pushed for a no-deal Brexit. And that would have left the whole of the UK in an even worse state than it is now. So, an ex-Brexit party MEP who owns a seafood company and campaigned on the benefits of Brexit uh, would hold for the fishing industry has bemoaned Boris Johnson's deal for leaving her with no fish. What a surprise! In a clip that quickly went viral on Twitter... June Mummery said that waiting five years for fishing quotas to expire was, quote, a long time when you have nothing. Mummery campaigned with the pro-leave group Fishing for Leave in 2016. 
and has repeatedly claimed that leaving the EU would benefit Britain's fishermen and women. Again, none of these benefits have come to pass. Because as we've said before, there are multiple things affecting the fishing industry, but the fishing industry in the UK being in the EU was not one of them. She said, We are taking back full control of our waters and resources. Fishing shouldn't even be in any deal, she said in March. The GDP is not a small 2%. That GDP is 100% to the coastal communities that we need and we need that back. We've got a golden opportunity to rebuild our industry that quite frankly has been taken away from us. Again, your GDP is not 2%. It's far, far less than that because... One of the things that, is, that they were saying towards the end of January was that if you rebuild the fishing industry, um, again, based on, once again, magical thinking, that somehow the fishing industry would become worth about 2%. This is what their claim eventually became of this is why the fishing industry is so important. You don't understand. We're being held, we're being held back by the EU. Um, because in reality, our fishing industry makes up 2% of the UK GDP. Again, that is not true. If you look at the official figures, it is worth less than 1%. It is like 0, 0.0 something percent. Again, magical thinking that these Brexiteers have. And of course, this person, uh, like most of the people in the Leave campaign, who really didn't campaign they had it they wanted to essentially leave the eu for again magical thinking reasons um and didn't really understand what meaning what leaving would actually mean and of course now this person actually knows what leaving actually means but of course this is not a golden opportunity it never was because as we've said multiple times now the problems facing the fishing industry were never caused by it being in the eu there were multiple multiple reasons and we've gone through them on this channel many times we've mentioned two of them in this video but anyway we'll continue but in a new interview she has changed her tune she said as fishing goes if we want to hang on uh hang on the in to the industry we have five years is a long time when you have nothing she said we're on our knees. We've waited 40 years and quite frankly, a lot of people will pack up, including myself. I've got no fish. Well, we did tell you this would happen and you ignored, ignored it completely. So this comes from a, a, a someone who tweeted in response to that. They basically said, oh my, Dune Mummery. The champion of the Brexit will be a great for fishing case has finally realised that Brexit will in fact destroy the fishing industry. I have no fish, she says. So Mummery's realisation came days after one of Devon's largest fish exporters has admitted he made a mistake by voting for Brexit, revealing that he has been unable to send consignments to Europe since Boris Johnson's deal with Brussels came into force. It's been an absolute nightmare, Brinkson-based fish merchant Ian Pikes told Byline TV. If I could turn back the clock, I would have voted. I uh, I would uh, turn back the clock. I would have not voted leave. Uh, I would have wanted to stay in for the future of my family. Perks has said that he was struggling to be optimistic about the future of the British fishing industry, despite the promises that things would get better. The reality is now that the twentieth of January. And we haven't had a single consignment to Europe from Brinkson, he said. For 40 years, I've been selling fish and overnight it's pretty much been destroyed. I don't see a light at the end of the tunnel as we speak. Perks added that he'd felt like he'd been taken for a ride by promises made by Johnson and others during the referendum campaign in 2016. What have we been saying all this time? All this time. And I'm so glad that many of these fishermen are now actually realizing that. Because as I've said before, this is a golden opportunity to actually get the fishermen now to actually start campaigning to rejoin the European Union. So, um, there you are. he said, 
I think I was taken along for the ride that we were all going on uh, with the bus that was going around. We were going to save 350 million a week and that we were throwing uh, to Brussels and that we were going to have free trade and Europe was going to be uh, desperate for our fish because we'd, we'd, we'd control all of it and we'd, uh, and we'd be in control of our own destiny. And I'm coming to the end of my career, but I think me and many others have perhaps made a mistake. I just thought there'd be a better future for myself and for my children and my children's children to become independent and have our, and have our own fishing grounds. <laughs> you know, what can you say? What can you say? But um, like I say, these guys, and I always say this, there has to be this... Um, Especially from people like me, even though we have we are we are constantly saying, "Yeah, we told you this was going to happen." We have to now go. Okay, you voted leave. It wasn't your fault that you voted leave. You got, as he said there, taken for a ride by the people who did. And I've always, always made a case to stress this very important point. There are two types of Brexiteer. There are. The Brexiteers, so these are Jacob Rees-Mogg, um, Nigel Farage, um, Boris Johnson, Michael Gove, uh, you know, Tim Rice, uh, sorry, uh, Tim Trice, I think that's how you say it. Um, you know, those are the Brexiteers. Those are the people who deserve all this blame. They are the ones who should be, have an absolute mountain about to collapse down upon them. And then you've got the Brexit supporters. And these were the people who were pied pipered along by people like Nigel Farage to the tune of sovereignty and take back control, which again means nothing, absolutely nothing. So always, always be prepared to reach out to these people because we need to get them to turn on these Brexiteers and the quicker that we get them to do that, the quicker we can start to have the conversation about rejoining the European Union. So, as always, uh, thank you for watching. Uh, please do remember to hit that like, and like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below, there is a link to my Patreon page and a one-off donation link. And as always, thank you to all the people who do support me uh, either of those ways or whether you, you know, uh, buy me a coffee every so often. Thank you very much. And as always, we'll see you all next time.